I can't enjoy a family trip with strangers around. That's why you should stay at home. I could hear my mother-in-law's triumphant voice over the phone. My in-laws, my husband, and I were supposed to go on a trip together, but I was left behind. My mother-in-law, who dotes on my husband, has been making snide remarks to me almost every day since we got married. I should stay home. That's a bit of a problem, isn't it? My mother-in-law laughed mockingly at my words. <laughs> a problem? How pitiful! Well, think of it as punishment for not listening to me well. Then the phone abruptly cut off. It's not me who's in trouble. It's you guys. My name is Heather. I am a 34-year-old part-time housewife. I usually take care of the housework and work part-time at a cafe in the neighborhood. I have been married to Bill for six years. My husband was a colleague at the company where I used to work, although we worked on different floors. We talked a lot before we started dating because we often saw each other in the hallway. The turning point in our relationship was at the company's Christmas party. I happened to sit next to Bill that day, and we had a great time drinking and talking like we always did. Bill went to restroom for a while, and I listened to a group of people nearby who were having fun talking. Then, a drunken manager from another department came over. And started bothering me. Drink more. Come on, you're young. I was confused about how to respond to the manager, who I didn't have much interaction with. Just then, Bill, who was in the restroom, returned. Bill looked at me and the manager alternately, then gulped down the drink manager had given me and said, "Chief." It seems like the table over there is having a good time. Why don't we go there together? He took the manager away from me and led him to the other table. This was the start of my realization that I was attracted to Bill. After dating several times, I confessed my feelings to him, and we officially started dating. Six years ago, we got married, and although we don't have any children. Our relationship is good. However, there is one thing that I am worried about, which is my mother-in-law, whom we are currently living with. After we got married, Bill and I lived in a small house together, but the next door caught fire, and our room was also flooded. We had to evacuate somewhere else while waiting for the recovery process to finish, but we didn't know where to go. Then. Bill's mother offered us to live with them, and we gratefully accepted. The problem is that after we started living together, my mother-in-law's comments became increasingly sharp. Even though I knew that she dotes on Bill, and had made some snide remarks before, living with her made it more difficult. For example, one day when I had finished doing all the housework and was drinking coffee in the living room. My mother-in-law came home and started running around the house, saying this to me: "Housework is a way to show gratitude to the husband who brings in income. You are really unfit to be a daughter-in-law if you can't even do this much." I don't know how to react to my mother-in-law's scolding, so I remained silent. If you can't do what you are supposed to do, then leave. There she goes again. This is her catchphrase. In the end, it was my mother-in-law who allowed us to live together, because she wanted to live with Bill again. For my mother-in-law, my existence as a wife is nothing but a hindrance. Mom, don't blame Heather too much. Well, what Mom's saying makes sense, in a way. It's no good to neglect housework just because you are working part time, right, Heather? It's not a bad thing to cherish one's own mother, but I wish my husband would defend me a little more. I never intend to neglect housework. 
Even though I work five days a week for a short time, I never neglect the housework for four people. I do the same even when I'm not feeling well. On the other hand, my mother-in-law, despite being a housemaker, is playing around every day. I've never seen my mother-in-law do housework since we started living together. But since I'm living under her roof, I can't complain to her face. In this unfamiliar environment, I was just enduring it. Then one day, Bill suggested that we go on a trip. Just the two of us, which was unusual. Do you want to go to a hot spring? How about next month? Now that the busy season is over, I have to take some paid time off. I thought if I'm taking it, I might as well spend it somewhere relaxing. A hot spring? Sounds good. I haven't put in my shift request for next month yet, so I can take time off whenever. After discussing it as a couple, we decided to take a three-night hot spring trip in the middle of next month. I couldn't contain my excitement and started researching the destination whenever I had free time. But just as we were about to make reservations, my mother-in-law started saying something outrageous. Heather, I hear you're going on a trip with Bill alone. Why didn't you tell me? I was speechless at my mother-in-law's sudden inquiry. Of course, if she found out, she might insist on going with us, so I kept it to myself. But without saying anything, my mother-in-law let out an exaggerated sigh and then said what I expected. Ah, next month happened to be our wedding anniversary, so we want to take family trip to celebrate. Yes, we should stay in a luxurious pension. Naturally, I had no intention of going on a trip with my mother-in-law. Um, but this time, we were planning to go with just the two of us. So, well, maybe next time we can all go together. It was, it was the most compromising response I could come up with. But my mother-in-law wouldn't back down. Next time won't mean anything. We're celebrating our wedding anniversary. Can't you see? Well, if that's the case, why don't you just go with your husband? Just as those words were about to come out my mouth, Bill returned home from work. Welcome home, honey. We're just talking about the trip with Heather. Oh, I'm so excited. My mother-in-law was full of enthusiasm and started talking to my husband. And Bill was agreeing with her as if it were obvious. I wonder if Bill might have said something to his mother behind my back. Well, if mom is looking forward to it, why don't we go together? All four of us. Shall we put off our plan this time? Okay, Heather? Then, as if always invisible, my quiet father-in-law joined and said, Oh, a trip? That sounds great. I had already become unable to refuse the situation of me and Bill going on a trip alone. All right then, next time we'll go just the two of us. Although reluctantly agreeing, Bill showed a relieved expression. I was not quite satisfied, but there was nothing I could do about it. I thought I would at least try to push for places to visit and local food that I wanted to eat. My lazy mother-in-law had no objections to me deciding on all the hotel reservations and sightseeing schedules. And the day of the trip arrived. We had finished all our packings so we planned to have breakfast before leaving the house. When the alarm clock went off and stretched out my body in place. <sighs> huh. Bill? I noticed that my husband, who should be sleeping next to me, was missing. I thought maybe he had already gotten up and started getting ready. 
so I headed to the living room for the time being. However, there was no sign of Bill in the living room. Furthermore, his parents were also missing from the bathroom, kitchen, and entrance. No way! I had a bad feeling and called Bill's cell phone, but the phone didn't connect. Next, I called my mother-in-law's cell phone, and she immediately answered. Oh, Heather, what's wrong? Bill is driving now, so he can't answer the phone. Driving? Where are you guys now? When I asked, my mother-in-law answered with a carefree tone. Where are we? You were saying? We're on a family trip, of course. We can't enjoy a family trip with strangers, so you should stay at home. I could hear my mother-in-law's triumphant voice over the phone. I should stay at home. That's a bit of a problem, isn't it? I said. And my mother-in-law laughed mockingly at me. <laughs> a problem? How pitiful! Well, think of it as punishment for not listening to me well. After saying that, my mother-in-law hung up the phone forcefully. I covered my face with both hands, and my shoulders shook, not with sobbing, but with a big laugh. <laughs> Just enjoy yourself, dear. You will soon regret leaving me behind. I immediately opened the hotel reservation site and booked a luxurious hotel in the tourist spot we were supposed to visit today. I also made a reservation at a restaurant where I could have a delicious meal. It was a reservation just for one person, for me. All right, let's enjoy myself. I got ready and took my luggage onto the cab. Since I had researched various tourist spots, I wanted to visit them. It was a small tourist spot, so I might run into them, but I didn't care. I decided to forget about them and enjoy myself to the fullest. I entered a small souvenir shop that caught my eye, went into a fashionable cafe, chatted with the locals, and enjoyed my trip. As the day drew to a close, it was time for checking. The hotel I had booked was the most luxurious hotel in the area. As I passed through the hotel's automatic doors and headed towards the check-in counter, I heard a woman's loud voice. Why can we stay? I told you I pay if it's about money. As I looked closely, it was my mother-in-law who was causing a commotion. The hotel I had made a reservation for them was not this one. As I kept my distance and watched the situation, my husband noticed me. Hey, Heather, what's going on? You made a reservation for a pension, but we couldn't stay there, so we came to this hotel. And now we can't stay here either? As he said that, he started to get closer and closer to me. My mother-in-law also approached, her face turning red with anger. Yes, that's right. The pension wouldn't give you the keys unless the person who made a reservation was there. It's a security measure. That's why I told you. It will be a problem, didn't I? Finally, they seemed to realize how foolish their actions had been. My mother-in-law and husband exchanged glances. Their faces deflated. Just as they were about to cause more of a scene, several hotel employees rushed over to us. They quickly ushered my in-laws and husband outside, where they looked quite ridiculous. How dare you, Heather? We will stay at an even more luxurious hotel than this one. I felt somewhat refreshed and checked in with a smile. The beautiful interior and luxurious decor made me feel like I was in a dream. As I sat on a sofa in the lobby, I heard a group of women next to me, giggling and talking about something that caught my attention. Hey, do 
Do you know about that hotel near the museum? There is a really bad rumor going around. Apparently, in the rooms on the second floor, people hear hallucinations and have all their belongings stolen. What? Is that true? That's not all. Apparently, someone even murdered there. And they still don't know who did it. We're lucky we're staying here, aren't we? Creepy. But if something like that really happened, wouldn't you call the police? Well, the hotel staff might be in on it too, they said. It was a rather ominous story, and I suddenly realized that the dinner reservation time was approaching. I quickly got up and headed to the restaurant. The dinner at the high end hotel was even better than I had imagined. After dinner, I enjoyed a bath in the jacuzzi and was about to change into a nightgown and watch TV when suddenly my cell phone rang. Hello, Heather. We found a gorgeous hotel. It's very comfortable. It's too bad that you couldn't stay here. My mother in law sounded like she's in a good mood. Oh, is it so? You were lucky to find a hotel you can just go and stay at like that. Right? There is hardly any other guest here except for us. So it's quiet and easy to spend time. It's really lucky to find such a beautiful hotel. So close to the tourist attractions, isn't it? With her words, something came to my mind. Excuse me, but is it a hotel near the museum? Yeah. But what about it? I knew it. I remembered the story about the creepy hotel that I heard in the lobby before going to dinner. I think it's better to run away from that hotel, you know. However, my mother in law laughed at what I said and dismissed it with a snort. <laughs> Are you jealous of us staying in a nice place, Heather? Just be jealous then. See you later. Once again, my mother in law hung up the phone unilaterally. After that, I turned off my cell phone and spent a leisurely time. Then the next day, after checking out of the hotel, I visited the tourist spot I couldn't go the day before. After having fun all day on the third day, I arrived home around sunset, and it seemed that the other three had already returned home as I could see the light leaking out of the window. Hey, I'm back! As I opened the living room door, all three of them started making noise. My mother in law began talking about the incident that occurred at the hotel. She said that someone had entered the room during the night. And it was so scary that she quietly hid in bed. When she woke up the next morning, her wallet, phone, and all of her other belongings that were on the desk had disappeared. The three of them were in trouble and had to use the change that Bill had to call relatives who lived nearby for help. Fortunately, the relatives came quickly and paid for the hotel bill, allowing them to return home safely. Now, they are planning to go to the police station to file a report, and their anger is directed at me. Yes, directly or indirectly. You are also responsible for this incident, Heather. Even if you say that, if you had not left me alone and went on a trip, this would not have happened in the first place, right? When I honestly conveyed my thoughts, My husband raised his voice. Shut up! Don't talk back to me like that. I can't deal with you anymore. I'm divorcing you. I was stunned and couldn't say anything. But soon, I went silently to our bedroom, took something out of my cabinet, and showed it to him and his mother when I returned to the living room. Fine. I don't need a husband who won't protect his wife from being bullied. 
Bill's face turned pale. I had taken out divorce papers that I had prepared just in case this day would come. Did he not think I would agree to it? He looked totally shocked that I agreed to the divorce. Then my mother-in-law took advantage of the situation and started pushing for a divorce to him. Get rid of this terrible wife and find someone new. I'll help you, okay, sweetheart? Bill couldn't go against his mother and eventually took the divorce papers. Well done. Goodbye. Live happily with your precious family. Ignoring Bill, who had collapsed on the spot, I left the house. Afterward, we both filed for divorce, and it was finalized in a few months. Bill begged for reconciliation multiple times, but I ignored him every time. From now on, I'll protect you, Heather. So come back to me. He may have said that, but it was already too late, and I no longer had any feelings for my ex-husband, so I wasn't swayed. On the other hand, it seemed like my ex-mother-in-law was happy to have gotten rid of me for a while. However, that happiness didn't last long. The news of our divorce spread around the neighborhood. Gossip-hungry people began investigating the cause and found out about my ex-mother-in-law's bullying towards me. With her already holy attitude, this incident caused even more people to look down on her. Since she had left all the housework to me, their house was now a mess. I had no interest in my ex-husband or ex-in-laws. However, since I went through a painful experience, I hoped that they would somehow rebuild their lives and live honestly. As for me, I was able to return to my hometown and found a job through a friend's introduction. At this point, I truly feel done with marriage, but who knows what the future holds. Either way, I plan on enjoying being single for a while.